friends. My name is Paige and I am on a journey to lose 100 pounds. So far I have lost 60, nearly 10 of which have been on Manjaro, which is awesome. I started taking Manjaro Friday, August 26th. I took it after work so that way if I had any side effects I could deal with them over the weekend and then be fresh and ready to go for work on Monday. Um, I also tend to eat more on the weekends, so I figured it would be more helpful to have that that extra support of the the higher end of the dose over the weekend. And all in all, it hasn't been that bad. Um, other than having some like minor cramping on the first day or two, uh, I really haven't had any side effects and I can't complain. I did notice that I had some major appetite suppression the first few days of the shot, which was really cool. Um, it le it's leveled off since then and I'm still not eating as much as I was before, which is nice. It's also easier to eat how I want rather than struggling against my body just naturally wanting to eat more. I find that I don't need to snack as much and it's really... Um, it's a nice change. So I just wanted to share with you a couple of things that I noticed on my first two weeks of Manjaro that <laughs> from what I've seen from other YouTubers, Facebook support groups, and on Reddit are very true. And it's true from my experience too, but the first one, everyone says it and I absolutely agree, make sure that you're getting enough water. My goal is to shoot for about 100 100 plus ounces a day, and it's worked out pretty well for me. The second thing is to get some kind of movement in, whether or not that's like, you know, a hardcore workout, or it's just a walk around your house, around your street, around your block, any sort of movement will help. I've noticed the weeks where I have, weeks, days, where I have more movement, I tend to lose more. Third, don't overly restrict yourself. Don't cut out entire food groups. You need to find a sustainable tool for weight loss. And, you know, restricting and cutting out entire food groups, it's not going to work. This isn't a crash diet. It has to be forever. And it has to be something you can sustain. Ooh, number four is a big one that a lot of people, including myself, have trouble with. But I've been much better with it in in recent times. And that is that your weight will fluctuate. That is okay. That's normal. It's going to happen day to day. It's, it'll go up and down a little bit. But the point is to focus on like a weekly net loss. And one of the ways that I've really focused on doing that is to I keep um, like a daily and a weekly weight tracker. And I will put it up somewhere around here. But I track my gain or my loss daily, and then I also track my net loss from my starting weight for the week and my ending weight for the week. And I found that to be immensely helpful. My first week on Manjaro, I ended up losing four pounds. It, it slowed a little bit week two, and I only ended up losing two pounds. But that's okay. You know, we, we had net losses, and that's what's important. So... What I really want to share with you guys is my story and how I ended up here. Um, 100 pounds is a lot of weight to put on, and obviously it didn't go on very quickly. It's not going to come off very quickly. But how did it happen? How does, how does it happen for anyone, really? But I was, I was one of those kids that always struggled with their weight. I was always dieting. Puberty hit me like a freight train, and it was just downhill from there. Oof. So I was, I was on a diet since I was in middle school. I went into puberty about fifth, sixth grade, and I packed on a lot of weight. I packed on about 40 pounds in two years, and that's a lot for, what, a 12-year-old? And nothing I did was ever effective. No exercise, no kind of dieting. Um, when I was older, more so in high school, um, I would go to the gym religiously for a very long time until I eventually I had to stop because going to the gym didn't make me feel good and I didn't lose any weight. It just, I felt like ground down into the ground. I know that's 
a weird way to phrase it, but whatever. And so eventually I would just get so worn down that I'd have to stop. And then I would just spiral <laughs> into self-hate and self-loathing. Like, why is this so difficult? Why, why can't I be, you know, active and fit like everyone else in gym class? And like, why can't I eat reasonably? Why am I always so hungry? Well, come to find out, and I didn't figure this out until I was really fresh out of college in, well, my master's in 2019, um, that I had undiagnosed sleep apnea. And it wasn't until I got this diagnosis that I learned that a lot of people in my family have sleep apnea. So it's it's more, it was more genetic than weight related, which is why I think it, it was a contributing factor to my weight gain and inability to lose weight. And so I got on therapy for sleep apnea and the first, I'm going to say one, two years after I got on therapy, really during, you know, peak pandemic time, I lost 50 pounds. So I averaged about 25 pounds a year. It was great. I was floored. And then I stalled. I stalled for eight months. <laughs> <sighs> that was so frustrating. Nothing I did. And I mean, nothing worked. Nothing would make the budge, the scale budge, the budge scale. Uh, it got to the point where I was lifting weights four to five times a week and I was running a 5k almost every weekend, if not every weekend. I'm running on this weekend too. Um, I was doing all of that and I was being really strict with my diet. I was doing really strict keto and I wasn't eating more than 15 to 1700 calories a day. And it just, it wasn't working. And it got to the point where I was so beaten down. I couldn't keep this up. I had no life. <laughs> um, I finally broke down and I asked my doctor for help. And I am super fortunate that I finally found a doctor who is supportive because I've had very poor experiences with doctors in the past, particularly a cardiologist who fat shamed me at every appointment, literally every appointment. I had such anxiety, but I just like, I needed help. I was at the end of my rope. I didn't know what to do. And like, I don't, I don't want to be fat forever. I've always been fat for once in my life. For once in my life, I want to know what it feels like to be a normal size. So, end rant. I asked her for help losing weight because I'm, I was at the end of my rope. I didn't know what else I could do. At this point, I didn't think it was a matter of willpower. So, she prescribed me Ozempic. I waited for it to come in because they had to order it. Hello, supply chain issues. And then my insurance denied coverage. Joy. All right. Um, so I had to make another appointment and go back in to see my doctor. We talked about it a little bit more. I had three options. I had Contrave, Fentramine, or Manjaro. I didn't like Contrave or Fentramine. I have big issues with anxiety, and both of those medications can make you more anxious. So I chose Manjaro, which I'm absurdly happy with at this point. And that's how I ended up here. Um, I got the Manjaro. I was able to use the discount card. No problem because, surprise, surprise, my insurance denied it. Go figure. And I took, I took my first shot August 26th, Friday after work, coming full circle to the top of this video. And it's, it's been pretty good ever since. I mean, granted, it's only been roughly two weeks. But in my first two weeks on the 2.5 milligram dose of Manjaro, which is really just like the introductory dose to get your body used to the medication, I've lost a total of six pounds. I was floored. The scale finally moved. I started Manjaro at 181. I ended Manjaro. Let me check my tracker. I started Manjaro at 181.4 pounds. I ended my second week of Manjaro at 175.4. Like what? What? The skill had not moved past, like, 182, 181 for eight months for me, no matter what I did. And then I go, in my tummy, first week, I lost four pounds. Second week, I lost two. What? This is amazing. I was so happy. 
So I am really excited to see what kind of progress I can make on the higher dose. I didn't exercise the first two weeks just because I wasn't sure how my body was going to react to the medication. My thinking is, is week two and two and four. Wow, week three and four, we will start introducing some exercise and see how we go. I know earlier I said, you know, move more, do everything like exercise. Obviously not a debating. I didn't do that. I wasn't going to push myself. Do it when you're ready for it. I did go for walks and I did, like I did move, but I wasn't doing like the same kind of exercise I was doing pre Manjaro. but that is the goal is to get back to that and get back to that lifting weights a couple of times a week and running on the weekends. And that's what I like to do. Hopefully now I'll just see some progress doing it. But yeah, so that's that's my recap of weeks one and two in Manjaro. Um, I'm going to do, I'm recording these a little bit behind because I'm a Johnny completely with this. So fun fact, I'm actually on week four. Um, but I'm trying not to give anything away for my week three and four recap. Yeah. But that was my experience on Manjaro week one and two, the 2.5 dose. I'm really happy with it so far. Um, I'll throw up a picture of my little tracker so you can see my weight fluctuations where I and where I ended for the first two weeks. But yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys. I will see you in the next one.